Carrie Negon, thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to speak with me about this. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Now, Arlen Dumas is still Grand Chief in Manitoba, albeit suspended without pay over allegations of sexual misconduct. Uh, now, two days before he's to face a vote of non-confidence by the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, he issues a press release saying he is seeking trauma-based treatment for, quote, healing not only from the events of the past five months, but also a lifetime of trauma. Uh, Carrie, we'll start with you. What do you make of that? I was... Um I'm a bit disappointed. Um, it seems like a political move, and I don't blame him for doing that because he does have a lengthy political career. But as a female, as a woman, um, it doesn't feel right. Um, this is not just a one-off incident. There was incidents before that were reported and widely discussed, and this seems to be a pattern of behavior and saying that he's going off and to seek treatment for uh, trauma-based treatment. Um, what about the women? Um, is there anything happening for the women who have been his victims, alleged victims? Um, I'm really concerned about um, the way this is looking. Um, there's no accountability here. Um, I would have liked to have seen him maybe apologize, maybe step down, um, do something more definitive than say I'm going to I'm, I'm going to seek treatment. Mm -hmm. And Nigan, same question to you. What's what's your take on the Grand Chief's press release? Uh, blaming the victim is exactly the problem with Arlen Dubis in the first place. He's consistently and continually blamed others and not taken responsibility himself on this issue. He continues to deny that this issue uh, was anything other than what he calls like uh, a workplace situation, a uh, human resource situation, whatever he wants to call it. It is a situation in which multiple women have come forward to allege that there's been inappropriate conduct and behavior. Uh, we broke that story at the Winnipeg Free Press, and so uh, we've seen the documentation and so on. And uh, while uh, Arlen Dumas is also very litigious, and meaning he's aware that he has a lawyer, and this is, an, this is a move to seek to try to stave off the election or the uh, the removal of him from as Grand Chief. And this is, other than that, this is just a situation in which he's trying his best to try to recover what he can from a political career that's gone completely awry. And it's a situation where if Arlen Dumas will not take a responsibility for his own actions, this will never be resolved. And I can't see him being able to uh, proceed in any other direction other than to say that, uh, you know, blaming a victim, uh, which is a person, what he has said is, oh, I've been traumatized over the past few months. Well, who produced that trauma in the first place? And saying, oh, it's because of my past trauma is just a convenient excuse to say that I, I don't want to apologize. I don't want to take responsibility for this. This is a situation that has gone completely awry, not just because of him, but because the numerous people within the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs who have protected him over the years and have ensured that his behavior, while have been reported within uh, the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs, has continued. And that is a serious problem. It's not just Arlen Dumas here. It is also the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs and the staff, which have for years supported this behavior by doing things. We have to remember that the allegations are going back years and there was supposed to be some kind of healing journey that the chief was on. There was supposed to be some kind of processes changed. But as we saw within the report again that we had uh, talked about at the Winnipeg Free Press, there is a toxic workplace that has been fostered over years. All right. So will Arlen Dumas be Grand Chief after tomorrow's non-confidence vote or still be Grand Chief, I should say, Negan? Well, not according to the schedule, <laughs> because according to the schedule that was released by the Assembly today, uh, what you saw is they actually have scheduled into the day itself the uh, decision on, on when will the by-election be held for Grand Chief, and uh, <laughs> that tells me that the uh, Assembly is already preparing to have him removed. And uh, I have sources within the Assembly and also within the Chiefs 
of Manitoba. And I can tell you that the sentiment, the majority opinion that I'm hearing is that he will be removed. However, we have yet to see. And if there's anything that this situation has produced, it has been a failure to listen to victims been a failure to listen to the kind of ca kindness that Kerry is talking about. You know, uh, I hope that everybody notices that, you know, uh, we have an Indigenous woman here who is uh, being very kind uh, to a person who really at times has shot, not shown that kindness to others. And so that's exactly the kind of things that I think the Assembly is going to need to do moving forward is to listen to Indigenous women, uh, not listen to those who have been a part of the situation for a number of years. And Carrie, we'll jump over to you. Um, how would having more women leaders uh, sort of help the situation? I think having more female leaders, it will create balance. Um, women voices have been absent from First Nations politics for far too long. Um, this goes against our traditional ways of of leadership and. Um, there's a lot of, I hear a lot of people talk about um, Indian Act chiefs, and um, there's this, I, I talk to a lot of women, uh, a lot of matriarchs, who don't agree that this is a system that works for Indigenous people. We need to have an equal voice at the table to hold um, um, leaders accountable. I think if we had an equal disbursement of female chiefs, male chiefs, we'll have more balanced dialogue. Maybe incidents like these won't be sloughed off. They won't be um, so easily um, dismissed. And we really need to have the female voice at all levels of government. And because traditionally that's what we did. Leaders didn't just act on their own. They had the matriarchs, they had the grandmothers, they had the elders, they had the youth, and they, they made decisions together. And ideally, we should have that, that type of system. But the current system we have now, I, I see that there is possibility for change, especially now when I see a lot more female chiefs taking, taking the lead and taking up these positions and taking up this space. I think that... Um, it's been um, very long. Um, it's taken too long to get to this point is what I'm trying to say. And I feel hopeful for the future, um, but we need to move quicker. And um, maybe some things like this would stop happening. All right. Uh, thank you both for, for that. We are unfortunately running uh, short on time here, so we're going to have to end it there. But certainly appreciate you both taking a few minutes out of your day to speak about this, and we will certainly keep track of uh, all that's going on with the AMC. All right. Thank you.